Hello, my name is Guy Peterson. I am an MPH student and this is my practicum presentation. Um, my project was titled International Health Training Community Health Workers in Tanaka Tepeque, El Salvador to Improve the Health of Their Community. So part of my introduction is to talk to you a bit about El Salvador. As you can see in the slide, it's located in Central America. It is considered a low middle income country uh, with in general poor health outcomes and poor public health access. Some of the top causes of mortality in El Salvador include ischemic heart disease, interpersonal violence, lower respiratory infections, diabetes, and stroke. As you can see from the, this list, many of these are not really tropical diseases that maybe would have afflicted this country in the years past, such as malaria and tuberculosis. Many of these are non-communicable diseases, and we do see evidence that these diseases are on the rise. Much of these poor health outcomes, however, are preventable through lifestyle modification and through effective public health education. And that's where the purpose of this uh, project comes into play. Um, uh, the purpose of this project was to utilize community health workers to improve the health quality and health outcomes of their own community. So what is a community health worker? A community health worker is somebody that's in the community. It's not a professional. It's not a nurse or a doctor. Um, they don't have to have extensive knowledge or uh, experience or information. They simply need to be motivated and have good, uh, good education and good knowledge background to uh, be able to make a difference in their community. Their use, uh, their efficacy has been shown in other parts of the world um, to be highly cost effective. What are, what are community health, health workers, what are they not? Um, like I mentioned, they're not doctors, they're not uh, nurses, they are members of the community, uh, people's church members, uh, neighbors, that sort of kind of thing. What can they do? Um, we, uh, part of it, a big part of it is doing vital signs and health prevention disease, uh, health promotion disease prevention kind of visits with people. They can be a source of referral to higher levels of care within the community. They can do public health outreach, um, even to local villages, doing things like health fairs and that kind of thing. The next question is, how are they trained? Um, they've been trained a multitude of different ways in other organizations and in other parts of the world. The model with International Help, which uh, stands for International Health Education for Local People, is a generally four-day training curriculum, including a pre-test and a post-test, and um, also requiring that they show that they are, uh, that they ha can utilize the skills that they've learned, such as learning how to take a blood pressure and a pulse. The next question is, are they effective? That is what we want to show in this project, but it has been shown in other locations in the world that yes, they are effective what, the, what they do. The next slide is over our methods. Uh, international help uses a basically a four-step process uh, highlighted by partnership, assessment, training, and accessibility. The first step is partnership where international help, we want to find a good partner. In, the, our, in this particular project, that partner is going to be a local pastor of a medium-sized church in Tanaka, Tepeque, El Salvador that came to the organization requesting this training because of some of the good results that other communities had seen. We want to make sure that this is a good partnership and that they know what they're getting out of the relationship. We are providing targeted education and training community health workers. We are not providing drugs. We're not providing lots of resources or American doctors or nurses or anything of that nature. It's primarily educational in its thrust. The next step was assessment. Uh, we want to know as much as we can about the local community. Um, we performed a survey first of a representative example of some local community members, specifically church members, um, and we asked them what health ailments that they currently suffer from and what they are concerned about in their community. I will present that a little bit later. Uh, we also uh, had focus groups that were performed where they rated what they felt were the most common health problems in their community and how serious were they on a scale of one to five. 
Uh, the last step of assessment is looking at public health data, um, dredging data, whether it's from World Health Organization or other, other places to look at what objectively has been shown to be the top causes of death in this country and th in this area. The next step is training. So after we've done that assessment phase, we can look to see what are the felt health needs, what objectively do we also know people suffer from, and we can make up that four-day curriculum to specifically address those problems and address those felt needs to train these community health workers well to go out in their community and to make a good difference. Uh, the last step is sustainability. The whole idea of this project is that it is cost-effective that we train and then support these community health workers. They are not paid for this in any way, uh, but that they go out and they make a difference in their community uh, and that it be a self-propagating thing, that it not require large, vo large volume of money or time input from the organization to them, um, that they keep the, the whole thing going themselves. On the next slide, you will see some of our results. First off is the survey, where we simply polled 65 different people about what they felt were the problems that they had experienced. As you can see from the chart, 45% of the people uh, say they experience headaches. That's a very common problem that we see there. Next up was joint pain at approximately 28%. Uh, dyslipidemia, or in other words, high cholesterol, was felt to be a problem, a very common problem in this part of the area, this area of the world. Allergies, gastritis, high blood pressure, very common as we see, depression, kidney disease, diabetes, and liver problems. These were the top 10 problems of what we saw the people surveyed afflicted with. On the next slide, we have our focus groups. Uh, to conduct this, we asked the focus group, what are the most common problems you see on a scale of one to five rate how common they are. One being rare, five being very common. We then asked them how severe is this problem. One is not severe at all, five is very severe. We added those numbers up uh, to get up to a score basically between two and ten. Our top ten problems we discovered as you can see in the chart were gastritis, stress, diabetes, hypertension, fevers, dyslipidemia or high cholesterol, kidney disease, arthritis, cardiovascular disease, and respiratory infections. We next went and looked at data and some of the best data that I was able to come across was from the World Health Organization, specifically looking at El Salvador, not necessarily just this community, but El Salvador in general. The top 10 causes of death were ischemic heart disease, interpersonal violence, lower respiratory infections, diabetes, stroke, kidney disease, road injury, cirrhosis of the liver, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and HIV AIDS. On the next sl slide is discussion, and what we did with this information is all of those health topics that I just mentioned, we wanted to address in our community health worker curriculum. We wanted to address what are they, we want them to know what they can do about it, how they can prevent it, and also, they need to know when to refer. When it's serious enough, they need to go to a hospital or a physician um, because uh, clearly community health workers, are not, they're not professionals. They're not prescribing medications necessarily. Um, but we do want them to have the access to the knowledge and the skills to be able to help their local community and make a difference, primarily through health education and prevention. So under discussion, uh, we made a community-specific health education curriculum that can be performed in four days. I, during the process of this, made PowerPoints for every day, handouts, lesson plans, a pretest and a post-test to ensure that we are putting out a good product. All of the emphasis here is on prevention. This training is scheduled to occur in January of 2018. Future work could include future training for these community health workers. Could they have further training to learn how to do immunizations? There's always more room for, uh, for improvement, and um, we certainly want to know how could we have done things better. Um, we, have, of course, want to look at sustainability, efficacy, cost-effectiveness. Uh, with more data in the future, we want to be able to show that these community health workers make a positive difference in their community and uh, reduce morbidity and mortality from some of, the, some of these preventable causes. We also want to show cost-effectiveness, as you can see by that... Uh, logo, effective altruism is a big topic right now, and we want to be ahead of that and show, have the data to show that what we do is effective altruism. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. I appreciate your time.